What makes this paint color so agreeable anyway? The color code is SW7029. We got the code, now let's get to cracking. Today's Sherwin-Williams color is quite possibly the best-selling one in their entire color catalog, which may inform you whether or not to use it yourself. We're going to go over some fun color pairings you can use with it, a recommended trim color or two, and finally, we'll tell you exactly how and where you should use it. Its name tells you a lot about what you're getting with this color, which could be a good thing or a bad thing. It's classified as a mid-tone neutral grayish, which is a balanced combination of gray and beige. This category of colors has become the modern beige, funny enough. The warm aspect of the colors allow them to feel more inviting and happy, but not too happy because of that gray additive inside, which is probably taken from the more contemporary furnishings out there. Less and less people are using oak trim, for example, so there's less need to stay within that yellow gold based warmth. Agreeable Gray has a pretty attractive LRV of 60, and that puts it right on the cusp of a mid-tone color going light. A lot of my clients say they want their walls to feel open and not too dark, which is understandable. The only problem with going with a color that's too light is it begins to lose specificity and can feel boring and uninspired. Agreeable Gray's 60 LRV allows it to stand on its own two feet and not wash away into the ether with all of those generic light off white colors. That's not to say that light colors are bad for your walls. It's just important to remember that sometimes lighter colors can get washed out quite easily and feel even more subdued. Within that grayish category, I find Agreeable Gray to be pretty balanced with yellow and red warmth. It tends to be so widely used because of that flexibility in its undertones. Because it tends to resemble a light taupe, it works really well with more cool grays as well as warm beiges and creams. But the undertone that I see pop up most often is a slight purple touch. And it's largely to do with its interaction with cooler lighting like direct daylight or LED lighting. When you have a color that's this neutral, it becomes even more dependent on your lighting conditions. But the good news is, if you like these sort of gray beige colors, there's a good chance that the other neutrals in your room will also shift in the same direction undertones wise. It's going to be pretty hard for agreeable gray to clash with anything in your decorative space. What are some similar colors to compare with? I guess you could start with Mercurial by Sherwin-Williams. It's only a one LRV difference, and it makes Agreeable Gray look even more warm with its yellow undertone. On the flip side, going with Modern Gray is a similar vibe, but even more of that yellow beige coming through. So when you start to put it next to other grayish colors with slightly stronger undertones, you begin to understand how neutral Agreeable Gray tends to be. What are some colors that go well with Agreeable Gray? Take your pick. The possibilities are endless here. What's nice is it has that 60 LRV, which allows it to contrast with any off-white you throw at it, but it's not going to be too dark if you want to incorporate a fun accent color like Grape Harvest. This color is approximately four times darker and deeper than Agreeable Gray, and as you can see, it takes that tiny bit of purple, but brings it out and truly amplifies it to a heightened level. I also feel it's a more interesting choice than going down the color chip to Agreeable Gray's darker counterparts in Warm Stone or Brainstorm Bronze. I mean, if you're going with bronze, why not go for Urbane Bronze, am I right? That's the Sherwin-Williams 2021 Color of the Year, if you didn't already watch our Color Code episode on it. But the beauty of neutral colors in general, Agreeable Gray being no exception, is the limitless flexibility color-wise. What trim color would I recommend? Again, you tend to have a large amount of flexibility with your trim color because of not only the balanced undertones, but also the decent amount of colorant inside making it contrast with any off-white over an 80 LRV. If you want a visible difference between your walls and your trim, have at least a 10 LRV difference, but having a 20 or more LRV difference will create a much more distinct and separated look. While you could go for pure white, I tend to favor the subtle taupe touch in alabaster. Now sure, pure white is a bit lighter and perhaps more stark, but with that added brown and alabaster, it sort of completes the overall look for me as a trim color. Alabaster and Agreeable Gray were really made for each other. Also, if you have any of that natural wood trim, whether it's oak or walnut, Agreeable Gray will work just fine. In fact, it was my third highest recommendation on our oak trim list. And now for the big question, where should you use this color? If you haven't already guessed it by now, the easier question would be, where shouldn't you use it? 
Agreeable Grey has an immense amount of versatility as a wall color. It's not quite light enough to pass as an off-white, so if you were using it on your trim, then I would perhaps recommend an off-white on the walls to create contrast. But when it comes to your walls, Agreeable Grey just won't let you down. It's a great color. It's balanced in its undertones. It has a serviceable amount of depth with its light reflectance value, and it's gonna incorporate itself nicely no matter what. It's agreeable by nature. So if you want your walls to become the backdrop for your amazing decor, this could be the one. I compared it to Benjamin Moore's classic gray right over here. They're not completely identical, but both have their pros and cons. Click here to watch our agreeable gray versus classic gray color clash. May the best color win.